Hello, PMC fans. Uh, oh my goodness, I just brain farted <laughs> people. I was about to say it's time, but it's not it's time. <laughs> but it is time for the weekly recap of week four. Now, before we start this video, people, I have some explaining to do. Now, there were a few videos that were missed and or late. Dugo Duds and the Dugo Stars was not put up last week. That was because Ferd unfortunately had some personal issues going on. Everybody just make sure to to even just if, if you believe in prayer like I do because I'm, I'm a Christian go ahead and and put a pair of prayer through make sure that Verd and his family are all right because they're going through some things right now um as far as the we uh the it's time video that video was not able to go up last week because of literally scheduling the schedule just between all the analysts got crazy I didn't get the necessary information I needed to record the video on time and when the information did get relayed to me, it was too late and I had to leave. I was away from my house a lot this week. So, with that being said, only, I believe, two matches were missed as far as uploads go. Being RG because of his issues and Roshan because he's in and out of the hospital at the moment. So, again, pray for him as well, people. And other than that, Jack's match went up late because, again, people were helping me and we had to push some things back but we are i'm i'm gonna do whatever i can to make sure we get back on track yes the weekly recap will be a day late today it usually goes up on tuesday you guys can mark that down on your calendar weekly recaps will be on tuesday this is going up on wednesday just because again scheduling i was unable to get the screens on time for this week uh you guys i mean i understand the schedule has been a little iffy but you, you guys have to understand how hard it is to keep all this stuff in line and to actually schedule people with things like this with people all over the world, people. The, we're, we're not just dealing with a bunch of people from Connecticut with me. Like, I have people all over America, all over the world. Roshan's in India, Verge in Australia, uh, Dolphins in Singapore. So it's like we have to work with the time that we are giving. But enough of that nonsense. I am joined here today by my good friend D Pad Gamer. Say hello, bruh. What's going on, people? I'm glad that we can uh, get back on track. Indeed, indeed. Uh, and people, I'd like to give a shout out. So if you're in the video, if you're watching this video, leave a like. Make sure to leave a like and also leave a comment in referring to what I'm about to say right now. Uh, shout out to D Pad. He's been basically my number one support system so far in the D League. With me saying that, I'm not trying to down anybody else, but he literally just hopped in and picked up any little bit of slack that I needed help for. Like if for some reason somebody couldn't do something, he'd be the first person to pop up, bro, I got it, I don't need you stressing out, I, I got you, I'm here, this is what we're here for. And that type of team uh, mindset is exactly what the PMC needs and wants to go forward. Now with that being said, uh, very eventful week if I do say so myself. How do you feel about this week, uh, D-Pad? Um, <clears throat> I think there was a lot of um, a lot of moves that you can see people improving on and i think there was some major upsets <laughs> oh yes oh yes indeed some some people's necks are still in pain from <laughs> what happened in previous weeks and i mean I'm, I'm very excited to just hop right in and talk about what's going on so without further ado we have match number one people we have the shellacking as you see on the screen, which pretty much looks like uh, Hoopa Unbound and Mega Lopunny just played volleyball with uh, Orso's team and kept slapping it back and forth across <laughs> with each other as Aki is able to pick up a 5-0 over Evil Orso. And Orso, if you get upset for my volleyball comment, my friend, I will drop you on your neck. We are joking. <laughs> <laughs> I am not trying to offend you. This is jokes. This is all in good fun, my friend, but you did indeed lose 5-0. Um, any feelings on this match here, D-Pad? Well, I think this just goes to show that Hoopa Unbound is definitely going to be uh, banned for the <laughs> the major season. Because, I mean, it's it's a mod that you can work around, but it's really hard to. Uh, you know, I, I've done some testing with it, and I understand too why Sm uh, Smogon put it in. You know, they, they ban it out of OU because it's just... You literally have to build your entire team around Hoopa Unbound, and he doesn't even have to bring it. It's like, it's crazy. You don't even have to bring them on, and then you can plan around it. But this match is exactly what you said. I mean, it was just like, who's going to get the kill? Let's just see who can get it. <clears throat> and the, the just the fact that he pairs his Hoopa Unbound with Megalopony is insane. 
Because Hoopa Unbound is one of those Pokemon where it's like, alright, if this thing is able to come in for clean, come in for free, like if something dies and then he's able to bring that in, you basically just have to pick your sack. Like, <laughs> because if you switch into something, something's going to take massive damage and then it's just going to be killed with the second hit. So it's like you pretty much have to play very aggressive around it. You have to double whenever you think it's coming in to try to predict when it's going to try to come in and clean you up. And, I mean... It, I, I do not like playing the pick your sack game, so I'm I'm all for this thing being banned. <laughs> yeah, it was an ugly match. I mean, not not bashing Orzo at all. It's just you know, you, you can't go in on a match like that and and not be, you know, yeah. It, it was just a it was a bad bad situation. Yeah, I mean, there there's not much you really have to say about this match. It's pretty straightforward. Just looks like Hoopa came in and beat some things up, and then whatever was left, Megalopony was able to clean it up. Now, with that, people, we shall move on to our second match of the week. We have, uh, good lord, who is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I, I was, I almost said the Washington Smogon Birds. My lord, uh, we have Trev, coach of the Atlanta Braviaries versus uh, Dolphin Squared, coach of the Boltgate Zerorix. And today, people, we have another shellacking. I watched this match, I think yesterday, honestly. I, I watched this match just because I wanted to make sure that sheet was updated. And uh, even though Kieran B went 6-0, it's not like it was necessarily an easy 6-0. Like, it's not like he was able to just sit in there, click one move, and something died. You know, he had to play very aggressive around his switch-ins he had to make sure to get it in for free he had to make sure to uh roost up or heal up. i don't even think he went for roost i, I see this is my problem when there's two kierums in the same season people i get confused but i mean he he just did his best job of working with kierum b he was able to identify it as a win con and he used it to amazing fashion how do you feel about this one d-pad um i think that Zoroark's could have potentially even won this match um, if he had made better reads and more aggressive plays. So I just felt like a lot of his predictions and stuff were either... <clears throat> I think you have to go middle ground. With <clears throat> when, sorry, i got to clear my throat here. <clears throat> you got to go middle ground when we're playing um, a counter team league. And he either made plays that were way too safe or way too dangerous. You know, it was like in the beginning he was making aggressive plays and then at the end he was making safe plays when you need to do it the other way around. You need to make aggressive plays when you're behind and safe plays in the beginning. So I just, I felt like his plays were not where they needed to be, if that makes sense. No, I, I completely understand you and this is gonna be a tale of what I, my main criticism for Dolphin this entire season. I don't like his use of Protea Greninja. He is way, too relaxed with excuse me that hiccup was strong people <laughs> he is way too relaxed with protean greninja the league killer itself everyone says this thing is amazing in league format and i am one for one one who believes it i just feel like dolphin should be way more aggressive with it he shouldn't like this this thing has so much at its disposal and i'm not saying that it would necessarily beat this man's kieran b but he didn't even, he didn't bring low kick low kicks a, that would have killed kieran yeah. It's like low kick, dark pulse, ice beam. Pretty much looks like it, it rips his whole team. And then, I mean, if you want to throw extra century and not even bring the skull just to be a horse, you then check Hitmonchan and Infernape. And Ala Momola is not going to sit in there and, you know, take... I mean, then again, Greninja doesn't have to stay on Ala Momola. No. But literally, with the moveset I just said, you, you check his whole team. Extra yeah. sensory checks Infernape and Hitmonchan. Zapdos dies to ice beam. Reuniclus, I mean, uh, Kyurem dies to low kick, and then I guess you can run Dark Pulse for Reuniclus. Yeah, I think like a Toxic Dusknor would have handled the Alamola, no problem. Yeah, it, it's just like, come on, Dolphin, man. I mean, it's funny because most of the people so far are voting to ban Greninja anyway, but it's like, I see no reason for it to be banned with how it's been played with this season. Not saying I'm not voting for it to be banned, because let's be real, if it's not banned, I'm going to draft it. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, well, I might draft it, and you might get Megalopony. <laughs> hey, I mean, it, that that works for me. Hey, Dolphin, Dolphin, keep keep tanking with Greninja so it gets in. Either way, I get a good mon. Oh, my lord, I'm, I'm, I'm hype. 
I'm, but yeah, uh, not too much to say about this match. We've actually, now that I look at it, there's a lot of pretty straightforward matches we had. Was that the second Street 5-0? Like, is, is that serious right now? That's insane. All right, this week was very, very uh, satisfying as far as getting your blowouts, people. Now let's move on to a recap match three, shall we? We have Max, coach of the Maximum Charizards, <laughs> against Spencer, coach of the Washington Talon Flames. Spencer is able to pick up a 4-0. In my opinion, it looks as if it's a very strong comeback win compared to the shellacking dolphin did to him last week and people the title of this video is going to be shellacking that's my word of the day all right so if you have a problem with it i will tweet it at you i will <laughs> threaten them with the uh the yiddish i shall don't <laughs> don't give me no restrictments <laughs> uh shout outs to migo aiden migo with the restrictments huh but uh um how do you feel about this match here, D-Pad? I know you were able to help uh, Max a little bit with his prep, and I know he appreciates it. He's actually been improving. He's doing a lot more as far as trying to predict uh, what his opponent is going to go for. And it seems as if he's a little bit more uh, aware of what his opponent might actually have as far as moves go. So, I mean, how, how do you feel about this match? Yeah, I spent a little bit of time working with him, and um, we talked about... I I'm trying to help him figure out how to team build for this. So, I, you know, he'd say, well, what about this mon? And I'd say, well, you tell me what counters it. And then, so I'm kind of forcing him to build the team, you know, and I, I just kind of guide him through it. So I think that is what part of what we're seeing the improvement from, is the fact that he is like, okay, well, this counters this. He has to stop and think. I don't just tell him this is what you need. So, you know, I, I spent a little bit of time with him just trying to get him to figure out, well, what counters what. And to be honest with you, I think if Mew didn't have Earthquake, he would have won the match. It, that Earthquake, I mean, it blew me back. I, I, you know, I've been doing Counter Team League for a while, and I just, it didn't even enter my mind that he would run a physical Mew. It was crazy. So yeah, I, I've seen my fair share of physical Mews, but I've never seen physical Earthquake Mew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which so, is why I'm saying it. It was shocking, and I think that Max could have had his first win of the week pretty easily had he not had that Earthquake hit him. So Spencer, kudos to you for the Earthquake Mew, my friend. That was, that was pretty good prep. That was very... That's why I love Mew, man. People say it's so overrated in this format, but it's such a Switch Army knife. You don't know what it's going to bring, when it's going to bring it. It could be Stallbreaker. It could be... It, it, it's everything you need. That's how I run Mew. I literally make it whatever, like, I, when I have Mew on my team, I do my five mods I think are going to do good against my opponent's team, and then I throw Mew in on whatever I'm missing. So if, like, if I'm missing a defensive mod, I'll throw in defensive Mew with the coverage I need or the necessary status. That's how I like to run Mew. I don't never build around it. I just kind of put it in last minute, filling in holes that I have. Yeah, so <clears throat> my theory on Mew is that um, it shouldn't be first first, uh, first tier. Just because, you know, it is a Swiss Army Knife, which makes it very valuable, but it doesn't do any of it well. So, like, I think it'd be a really awesome tier 2, or a really horrible tier 1. So that's kind of where I feel about Mew, but... Um, yeah, it was just... I, this was... I, I give props to both players on this match because, you know, Max did a lot of prep. He was really prepared for it, other than that earthquake, which shocked me. I mean, I told him, I said, honestly, if I was playing it, I wouldn't have expected it either. So, you know, I, I, Max, don't take this loss too hard because you did a really good job. And the Talon Flames did a lot of really good prep, like you said, bringing the Mew with an earthquake. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that was definitely a dagger. Um that that I, I don't know man dispenser bravo to you my friend bravo 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 um max you have that a rematch with dolphin my friend you were very close to winning that match week one let's see if we can pull it out this week and with that i think it's time for us to go on the week i mean week hello match number four we have the kansas city kakunas versus the detroit soul galios or soul galeos however you want to say it and even though the number is kind of pointed in the wrong direction, people... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> uh, the Solgaleos were able to pick up this win over Adam at 3-0. Um, Adam had nothing 
for sub toxic spadef drill it walled literally all of his team and picked up four kills people four kills and then he, he run a lot of very different sets he brought special intake with shadow ball um miss magius with mystical fire which was able to pick off the genesect late game to secure him to win um i mean he he did great man this this was a very surprising match and a very well earned win on his side how do you feel about this one d-pad i'm this is the match I was talking about. That was a huge shocker. And it's not saying I'm not bashing Solgaleos at all. It, But at the same time, I'm torn because watching this match, I felt the same way when I'm in the 1600s on Smogon. And then I play someone that's in the 1200s that has no experience and they destroy me because I can't read their moves. I've kind of felt the same way. It was like, okay, either he prepared the heck out of this or... He's just horrible and managed to beat a really good player. You know what I mean? Like I <laughs> that low ladder cheese. No, uh, he actually did prep really well. It wasn't necessarily him alone, though. He got some help from one of our analysts, uh, the Dugo, who is the Swami of team building. Threw him some ideas, and they, you know, they threw some ideas back at each other, and he pretty much helped him. Right. And just you know how we usually help whoever we, because people, for those of you who don't know we're here we love league format so if you're going to ask us to help you prep we're going to help you prep and so don't don't feel as if verd helping roshan prep was uh, a disadvantage towards adam it wasn't we help everyone prep they just have to ask us like yeah, as long and, and in case in case you're concerned anyone's concerned let's say i help adam build a team i would not then help the soul Galeos build a team so, like, there is a code of ethics. You guys don't have to worry that we're going to tell the yeah, other Yeah, 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 exactly, like exactly. That. If, if like, I, Verd did, Verd knew nothing of what Adam was bringing. Verd knew nothing of what Adam was bringing, and he, he just, like, he wasn't going to help Roshan and then help Adam prep to, you know, lose to Roshan or anything like that. We don't do that. We're not about that. That's horrible. <laughs> And yeah, Roshan was just able to execute. I mean, anybody can build a team for you. It just depends on how you execute it. And Roshan, to no avail, executed it quite nicely. Um, he was able to, you know, uh, identify his switch into certain mons, like Gladios being the switch into Entei, and him having a Shadow Ball on Entei was absolutely marvelous. Um, if he didn't misclick, he actually would have killed the Gladios, and he probably would have went 4-0. But he ended up misclicking. And he clicked Toxic on a Latias, so it was at like 30% when he would have killed it. And he missed the Toxic. So it was like, what, what are you doing, lad? <laughs> what, are you, <laughs> what are you doing? That's when the low ladder really came. I was like, Roshan wouldn't. Because the, the match was on Showdown, people. Um, Roshan, like I said, he, he's been having some issues. So he was unable to get his team gen in time and have the match over Wi-Fi because he was going to be in the hospital or something like that. And they had it on Showdown. And I'm, we're all sitting there watching live, and then he, I'm like, oh my goodness, Shadow Ball Ente, and it brings his Latias to like 30%, and all he has to do is click Shadow Ball again, and Latias dies, and then he clicks Toxic, and I'm like, horse? Yeah, see, now that I'm in the same boat, which is why I was saying, like, he's, he was either a really good prepper or a really horrible player, because I watched it live. I didn't see his post com at all, so I don't know how he prepared. I just watched that, and I'm like, like that's the kind of move i'm talking about where you do a toxic i'm like why yeah, so. exactly but he he followed i i don't worry people i hopped on him as soon as he clicked toxic i was like what the heck was that <laughs> and he was like it was a misclick i was like okay it, it better be a misclick or you better <laughs> or you're or you're bad my friend you're bad <laughs> but uh enough harping on this very surprising match we're gonna go on to our match number five of the week so we have the Maryland Mianchals getting their rematch against the New York Metagross. Uh, week one, I believe this match happened, and it was on Showdown, and it was a stall fest, if I believe correctly, that ended in RG's favor because of a Stone Edge miss from, uh, I forgot what exactly missed the Stone Edge. I think it was Tarak. I think Scarf Tarak, I went for Stone Edge, which would have killed something. It missed which allowed RG to then uh, stall out the rest of his team. 
um, and Mammal Swine, Mammal Swine, hello, <laughs> Kieran was able to put in a lot of work against RG here, as you can see, it went 4-0, and Jack pretty much used Kieran as his Cresselia switching, even though it had Moonblast, he knew it wasn't going to be able to do much, and he was just pretty much able to pressure stall it out of Moonlights, out of Moonblasts, until it's able to, and then just roost up, you know, get to a comfortable level of HP, and just say bye-bye to the rest of the game. Once Cresselia went down, um, Kiram cleaned up. Uh, RG went for a very questionable explosion, in my opinion, on the High Dragon, because it didn't do as much. It didn't do a lot at all. <laughs> so I, I don't know if RG had any attack investment in that fortress. But, um, yeah, he got popped down to his cuss app, clicked explosion, fortress died, and then it was just dead for no reason. Yeah, and I can I, I can see why he put it on there because it's like once you get hazards up or remove hazards, you need a free switch in, and it's a good way to just get a little chip damage, break a sash or anything like that. But you're right, like when he did it, seemed unnecessary. But um, I think that this this match and all the matches with the New York Metagross has really shown that you know Volcanion is good, but it's not as crazy good as everyone made it out to be you know initially like you know it i definitely think it needs to stay in tier one but i don't think going forward as we watch more leagues that um and and having our own as well that it's going to be a first round pick you know every time now oh yeah no i hear you i hear you i actually want to give a shout out to my boy jack for his prep with his Nido king people now for those of you who are unaware of his Nido king set if you didn't watch the video his Nido King was literally sub disabled because he was expecting RG to bring Specs, uh, Specs Volcanian. Now he was going to switch a Nido King, disable the uh, Steam Eruption, and then Volcanian would just sit there doing nothing. He'd have to switch out because it would be struggling, allowing him to set up a sub and then rip him a new one. But RG was able to play around it, uh, fine, and he ended up disabling, I think, Psychic on Cresselia. And I guess RG made, from me looking at the battle from the outside looking in, uh, Jack, I guess, was expecting for Cresselia to switch out because it could no longer do, you know, Psychic. But I think RG was expecting Jack to switch into Hydreigon because now, I don't know. I, I really don't, now that I'm thinking about it because Psychic was, I, I, I don't know. I don't, well, <laughs> RG clicked Moonblast there, and it seemed as if he was predicting the High Dragon to come in, and he clicked Moonblast on the Needle King, and I'm pretty sure he picked off the Needle King, so it kind of foiled Jack's plan a little bit, but I mean, Kiram was still able to come in and put all types of work in. Shout out to the Starmie as well. I'm trying to remember, uh, Starmie did a great job of handling the while. It was just switching almost every time, and it was just able to sit there and laugh at it pretty much. Not giving his uh, Mawile any opportunity to do anything. And same with the Cresselia. Cresselia was pretty... It, it picked up a kill. But, I mean, it wasn't really able to do anything. Kiram did his work this match. Ha! Uh, this was a great one, honestly. Yeah, I just... um, it To me, it's like it's like any, you know, Super Bowl or anything like that. You know, it, you love to see the offense. But it's really a good defense that'll win you the game. And, um... Which is why I tend to get to the playoffs and then never actually win, because <laughs> I'm always offense. But um, the, I think the the problem with hyper defense or playing it super defensively is the matches go on forever. So it's like, I, I, I would just throw this out there for anyone who's watching. If you have a really, really long match, please do post-com instead of live. And this one was post-com, so not a big deal, but you understand what I'm saying. like. If you would have watched this live, it would have been like an hour and a half. Oh yeah, I, I you telling me I'd be having the, the one that has to usually sit here and I would have normally had to record for both of them, so I would have had to record both versions of that match. I would have died and kicked them both out of the league. <laughs> Jack needs to stop with the with the there. There's no more Tarak stall, Jack. We can't run Tarakion stall anymore. We're not on that part of the ladder anymore. We're moving up. And, uh, people, we're, we're, this is week four, meaning now the playoff race is starting to shape up. Um, 
let me know going forward if you want me to show you guys, you know, like a, a, a showing of what our playoff race will actually look like going forward in the recap. Because, like I said, regular season is seven weeks, so there's three weeks left. Uh, when this is up, we are now in week five. The weekly recap goes, obviously, after the uh, week four matches are done on Sunday. Well, when they're uploaded on Sunday. So now we're in week five. So there's two more matches of the regular season this week and then the week after and then i mean oh my lord three 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 yeah stop confusing I, me i think we should put them up because we have some pretty heated matches coming up to, yeah so to get in for playoffs so i'll i'll don't worry people we will go ahead and we will get some playoff shenanigans set up and give you guys some more insight and with that we will go on to our sixth match the final match of the week the Baltimore Orioles and Choice CJ versus Kyle, coach of the Mesquite Mesprits. Mega Metagross and company versus Mega Sableye and them boys. How do you feel about this one? I didn't really get the chance to watch this one as much as I wanted to. So I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I wouldn't say iffy, but I'm a little less informed when it comes to this match. Okay, so... I think that this is kind of going to what we were talking about with uh, whether or not Greninja is broken or not, because every stinking week, Metagross is not a kill leader. So, you know, and I don't know if it's just how it's being played or or what, because every single match, it, it just, it's like, if you have it, it's almost like you build your t entire team around it, and then they know you're bringing it, and then they can counter it. So that's, I mean, that's kind of the whole story of his entire season with Mega Metagross. Yeah, that's so. that's literally what I was trying to say when a bunch of people were crying that we were allowing Mega Metagross this season. I'm like, in counter team format, yes, it is dangerous, but when you literally know it's going to come. When somebody has Mega Metagross, there's no reason for them not to bring that thing every week. And with that being said, it is easy to prep for. You just have to make sure. When I'm in a draft league... I'm making sure my wall, like, I want my walls to be able to take care of everything. Like, I'm not trying to ignore, I don't ignore any mons. Like, I'm not going to ignore Mega Metagross out there. Whether I get it or not, I'm going to make sure I have something that can take hits from anything. So, it's like, I, I don't know, man. It, in a situation where you can prep for stuff, I don't think there's too many things that are that dangerous. Like, you have ways to, there are ways to stop everything. Yes, there are going to be people... And say just because you can you can counter it means it's not broken. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying when you can prep for something, it is not as scary as we can see because Kyle isn't undefeated and Metagross does not have 15 kills right now. So yeah, see me that that's what proves whether or not it's broken or not because even an inexperienced player, and I'm not saying that Mesprits are. I'm just saying even in the hands of an inexperienced player, if the Mon is truly broken it's pretty easy to like clean the floor like if we allowed like mega a uh, mega mewtwo y or rayquaza into the league i mean you know you could take someone who's a noob and just give them a perfect version of it and it'll clean 90 percent of the team so you know that's why i don't think mega metagross is as broken as it is especially going into a match when you have mega sableye on the other end you know what I mean? It's like it, Mega Sableye will take any hit, can burn it no problem, and then kill it to death with either Dark Pulse or Shadow Ball. It's like... Or Foul Play. Or Foul Play. You know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's like you just you bring that in and, and you kill it. Like, just have someone with Will-O-Wisp or Scald on the team and Metagross becomes useless. See, this, this, this is why I like D-Pad. This is why... I like D-pad, but with that, people, that is our weekly recap for week four. Now, if you have anything you guys want to say, or as far as comments, you know, anything regarding what we talked about today, uh, any of your f your favorite matchups from the week and stuff like that, feel free to leave the comments down in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe to all battlers, all analysts, and the league channel. And don't forget that I will be posting the league document link in the description so you guys can be up to date and actually you know get a look at what the stats are looking like yourself uh d-pad would you like to say anything else my friend no i'm just really loving being part of the pmc and we're gonna keep making it great indeed we are people we're gonna continue to work as hard as we possibly can and with that i think we have to bid you guys adieu goodbye people <laughs>